So here's a real world analog of the parable of the travelers. Suppose that we're in a huge windowless spaceship uh, and it starts out in interstellar space and what we notice first about being in the spaceship is we're weightless. Uh, we float around in the middle of the spaceship and we're not attracted in any particular direction, we're not accelerated in any particular direction, and if I throw an object to you, it'll move in a straight line. It will not ex execute a parabolic arc like something thrown on the surface of the Earth. And in fact, what we could do, we could actually define what we mean by a straight line, and it'd be a really good idea to define what we mean by a straight line in our inside of the geometry of our spaceship by some unaccelerated motion, throwing a rock and not um, having any extra force on it, no electric force, no magnetic force, nothing pushing on it, no air movement. Um, and then we could define those straight lines by that criterion, what, ha what an accelerated motion does, and then we could investigate the geometry. Well, sounds like Euclid's paradise. Sounds like, oh great, we have this wonderful place. It's three-dimensional, but it's still very, could be very analogous to pl Euclidean plane geometry. Um, and we can just go ahead and define straight lines and figure out angles and lengths and, and think about the geometry and see if Euclid actually describes this correctly. And seems like Newton's paradise as well. This is exactly where the you know, sort of simplest kinds of uh, physics uh, 101 problems would be. Things going in straight lines and bouncing off each other maybe. But what we determine, what we, what we find, is that it's not quite Euclid's paradise after all. Um, what, you, what people notice is that there's small deviations from what we would expect. Kind of like in the parable, if you have two people throwing a rock here and throwing a rock here, they determine that, ooh, they actually, the separation doesn't change, even if I tried to throw them parallel. And it turns out that the kinds of deviations we get from what we expect to happen from a sort of Euclidean or Newtonian description of being inside this, uh, this spaceship is not quite correct, but it's only small deviations. Remember, they're still weightless. I'm not saying that suddenly they discover that everybody gets smashed to one deck or you know, one side of the spaceship or another. They just notice these small deviations. And here's the great debate about between the, uh, the spacemen in the spacecraft. Is it true that motion is no longer going along straight lines? When I throw a rock inside this big spaceship, is it being deflected actively away from a straight line? Or, some other people say, I think we should still call them straight lines because there's no force that we can see that is accelerating these objects. We just, I think we just want to say that the properties of straight lines have changed, just slightly, but significantly. Uh, the other people go back and say, well, I think there might be some mysterious forces. Maybe we just don't see why these things are, are deviating from straight lines, but maybe there's a force. The other camp that I'm representing in green says, no, I don't think there's any force at all acting on them. They, have, they aren't deflected away from straight lines, it's just the straight lines are different. But those people, the people in green, would still have the burden of proof of why is there this new geometry? What happened was that they started out a, way off in interstellar space and they never noticed this. Then later, they started doing the experiments again, they started noticing these small deviations. Okay, well what happens is they actually decide to make a window in their previously windowless spaceship and they discover that far from being in interstellar space, way away from anything, they're orbiting Earth now. And here's why they might uh, be determined, might, might be finding these small deviations, these weird effects that, um, for example, they would discover that if you just put previously, when they started out in interstellar space, if you just put a rock in the middle of the spaceship, it just, it wouldn't move. And you didn't give it any initial motion, it would just stay there. It would just, just sit there, okay, in the middle of the spaceship floating. What they discover now is that that rock is going to execute some s some slow periodic motions around its initial uh, initial location. Why is that? Well, here's one explanation of that. We're going to see some deeper explanations. Um, if what's going on is like, for example, I've got a, a diagram from the net of the orbit of the International Space Station. It's going on one of these great circles, actually, almost. It's elliptical, actually, but it's pretty close to a circular orbit, going around the Earth. And the thing is, what if you had two objects that are right next to the inter International Space Station, or even two objects inside the International Space Station that are just a little bit separated from each other? Well, then you're going to get something like this picture. Well, let's see. Um, what you're going to get is one object is going to be executing an orbit that's a little bit tilted with respect to the other one. 
and the other object is going to be tilted the other way. So you're going to get all these different variations, very, very slight variations on this orbit, one tilted more this way, one tilted more this way. This is kind of what the ground track would look like for, those, for that thing. And what you notice is that these objects, you can imagine these being different objects. That's not really what this is trying to track, but it's kind of similar. Um, the different objects are going to move with respect to each other. So uh, one, one extreme example here would be, what if one object is actually going around the equator? One, one uh, rock, say, inside this huge spaceship is orbiting right above the equator. And another one is actually orbiting with the International Space Station on this orbit exactly, okay? Then what, you're, what is going to happen, what's going to apparently happen, is from the point of view of this person or this rock, this one is going to go north, 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 and then on the back side it's going to cross the equator and then be south, and then north, and then south, and north, and south. So according to the person who's going around the equator, they look at this other object and they say, gosh, it's ex executing this weird motion, going north and south, north and south, north and south. Now remember, if you close the window up again and you're just inside the spaceship, all you see is that these two objects ex execute this relative motion relative to each other. Um, that one th thing is going north and south. So there's these weird motions relative to each other and you don't necessarily know why unless you open the window. Okay. So really important though is that these are still small effects. If it's not this drastic situation where one is the equator and one is the ISS, if you've got two objects inside the same spacecraft, unless it's thousands of miles big, then the effects are going to be really, really tiny. And the effects in this point of view, when you look at these orbits around the Earth, you can think of it as being just due to how the nearby orbits differ. They cross each other and so these objects are going to seem to want to move relative to each other. Now remember, all this is happening inside this spaceship, everything's still weightless. There's no drastic effect. It's not like gravity suddenly got turned on. Everything is falling around the Earth at almost exactly the same rate in almost exactly the same orbit, but they're not exactly the same orbit. And so if you look really, really carefully, there'll be these small, small deviations. Now inside something as small as the International Space Station, you wouldn't be able to see this effect unless you had incredibly good measuring apparatus and isolation from all other actual forces. But in principle, it's there. Okay, so here's, here's a dialogue between the spacemen, and this particularly the spacemen who had, I was in, indicating in green before, who had this idea of, I don't think there's really a force going on here. Because there's nothing really major happening to us. We're not being slammed against the wall. There's just these weird, slight deviations from what we expected. So that's one side of the dialogue. And the other side is the Earthlings, who have a very Newtonian point of view. They say, Look, guys, the explanation is simple. You're all traveling on a curved path. You're traveling around the Earth. That's a curved path, and there are different curved paths, and there's a huge force on you, so get used to it. But the spacemen persist, and they say, you know what? I think we're traveling on straight lines, but just modified version of straight lines. A straight lines in maybe a new kind of geometry. Okay. Well, the Earthlings say, no, that's not true. The Earth is pull, pulling uh, on all of you by this force called gravity, and it's pulling on you almost equally, except that, for example, when you're north of the equator, it's going to try to pull you back south, and when you're south of the equator, it's going to try to pull you back north, and so that's why different objects in different locations are going to have slightly different forces. Well, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's just delete that. There we go. Um, no, the, dial the uh, dialogue continues, and the spacemen say, no, 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 we don't feel any forces. Here we are floating. If you just look at us inside our spacecraft, you can see that a really good description of, of the physics inside our spacecraft is there's no forces at all. There's no such thing as the pull of gravity. There's some subtle f effects that we need to understand better, but there's no such thing as this massive pull of gravity. The Earthlings are saying, say, no, you're all being pulled enormously. There's a huge force on your space station and all of your bodies. But because they're almost exactly the same force on everybody, and again, that's that F proportional to M, the force proportional to mass idea, um, you only notice slight differences, what are called tidal effects. Well, the spacemen say, no, we want to persist on our, our description that we're traveling along these straight lines. We do admit there's these slightly funny rules for our straight lines. It's a modified kind of geometry, but that was a good explanation in, in the case of the travelers, and we want to persist in it. So let me say a little bit more about tidal effects, what this 
what the uh, the idea there is. Well, so tidal effects are suppose you have the Earth here, and the Newtonian explanation would be the Earth is pulling on all five of these objects, and these could be, for example, um, the middle, the backside, the front side, and two edges of the Moon. But any five objects here, um, and the principle is that the Earth is, according to Newton's laws, pulling on all of these guys in a very similar fashion, but it's pulling this one a little stronger because the force of gravity is stronger when you get closer. It's pulling on this one a little weaker. And it's pulling these guys a little bit sideways because they're all being pulled to the center of the Earth. Here's the spacemen's view of that. The spacemen are going ahead and falling with, say, this center object. If you ride on this center object in this picture for a little time, you're not going to think this guy is moving at all. But th because this one, again, according to the Newtonian explanation, this guy's being pulled faster. This guy will co go away from you that way. This guy's being pulled less fast, less strongly. So it's actually going to go slower. And that's from the point of view of the middle object, it's going to go upward. These guys are all coming down at almost the same rate. But these guys are coming in. And so it's going to look like this. So this is the spaceman's view. And this is a more precise version of what I meant by if you're inside this spacecraft, what would you perceive? What you would perceive is this kind of uh, phenomenon that you know, slowly, 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 if you have five objects put inside the International Space Station and don't disturb them at all, you're going to see the top one go up, the bottom one go down, and two side ones go sideways. That's very interesting. That's what needs to be explained from the point of view of the spacemen, not the idea of them all falling, because they're claiming that's the natural thing to do. Um, and if you look inside the spacecraft, none of these guys are being slammed against the wall. We think we're weightless. We think there's no real forces on us. But there's these slight discrepancies from just staying still, which we'd like to, effect, like to explain. Let me um, give you one more example of tidal effects, and then I'll continue the dialogue in the next video. Um, here's a very New Mexico-specific example. Um, I s set this up for a talk in my hometown of Albuquerque. So here's hot air balloons and uh, green and red chiles. Yes, it is with an E. Uh, look it up if you know, want to know how to spell it in Spanish. Um, and so we're going to take hot air balloons, for example, at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And we're going to drop green chiles from one and red chiles from the other. They start out 25 meters apart and 250 meters above the ground. Seven seconds to fall that long. Uh, we're assuming no air resistance, or they're extremely dense chiles for some reason. And what we discover is that they don't end up exactly 25 meters apart from each other. Now, obviously, we have to have incredible precision for this experiment. But what we discover is they, they show up um, landing 24.999 meters apart from each other, one millimeter closer after 250 mil meters of travel. That might sound a bit like the travelers. And that's exactly what this is supposed to, is supposed to resemble. Um, why did they get closer? What is the mysterious force that's pulling them together? Uh, the Newtonian explanation, of course, is that the chilies are like these arrows. They're being pulled drastically downward, which is why they fall out of the balloons in the first place, and slightly sideways, because they are just ever so slightly off of that vertical axis. And the pull of gravity is slightly in for both of them. But it's going to be interesting to discover an alternate explanation um, that's going to lead us in the direction of Einstein's relativistic explanation for this.